The Super Bowl is one of the most widely viewed televised events of the year, and companies have taken to using it as an opportunity to show highly produced ads to get the largest possible reach. Most of the ads are well thought out and really just to try to sell you a product. But there are some ads that try to push an agenda. One ad in particular was pitching something that is so dangerous that thousands of innocent lives are lost every year because of its message. The ad you just saw came from dog bite attorney Kenneth M. Phillips. At the time of recording this, it has 7 million views and it's pulled no punches in its attempt to paint pit bulls as an inherently aggressive animal that must not be adopted or even owned at all. The ad shows some things like they killed the most kids, they killed the most family members, which is pretty dishonest to begin with because we all know dogs didn't kill the most anything. He means to say out of all the breeds, they killed the most whatevers. But that's not exactly correct. One of the issues with the PR surrounding pit bulls is that shelters and the media have often used the term pit bull mix to describe mixed breeds dogs regardless of if it's actually a pit bull or not. That leads to a number of stray aggressive dogs being labeled as a pit bull mix and adds to the total number of pit bull victims, quote unquote. So even saying something like 75% of people that were mauled were mauled by pit bulls isn't necessarily factual because we don't really have the data on the exact breeds. But even if we did, according to experts, pit bulls are not biologically predisposed to aggressive behavior, and in most cases, aggression is linked to abuse or lack of training. So the issue wouldn't be pit bulls, but rather pit bull owners. Then there's this slide, pit bulls killed 29 Americans in 2017. Again, because of use of terms like pit bull mix, we can't take that number at face value. More, just saying 29 people were killed by such and such doesn't tell us how they were killed. Was this 29 home invaders stopped by a guard dog? 29 mailmen trying to deliver mail? 29 Kim Jong-un impersonators? What were they doing at the time? What was the dog doing? Was the dog astray? Did it have rabies? The conditions that lead up to these events matter. They help us understand what the actual issue is, rather than leaving us attacking some variable that may or may not be important. A bunch of mutts really, you know, not no full breed dog, I know that. It's a bunch of little dogs and transients try to keep. Armando says he usually sees stray dogs roaming up and down Crow's Landing Road. That's where 56-year-old Deborah Ansures was found lying dead Thursday morning. Do not adopt a pit bull. It says in big, bold letters over a very sad caramel pit. It looks like she just needs a hug and a Kong toy. You know, th this Kenneth Phillips guy, he he's a real piece of work. He has these shitty little memes he spreads on his Twitter too. The nanny dog is the number one killer of kids. But we already know less than 30 people a year, young or old, were killed in 2017 by pit bulls. In contrast, 500 children are killed by their parents every year. So statistically, it's more dangerous to have parents than it is to own a pit bull. Don't adopt parents, guys. Don't have parents. Then there's this one that actually leads to a tiny conspiracy theory. Shelters, stop lying to adopters. And then it links to a page that links to two articles written by the same woman that alleges that LA shelters are trying to lie to adopters in order to get them to adopt aggressive pit bulls even though LA shelters are considering just no longer giving breed descriptions. This cuts back on mislabeling dogs as certain breeds and misinformation regarding those breeds has less of an impact on the adopter. If you stop at any city of LA animal shelter, you're gonna see a breed label listed for the dog you might be choosing to bring into your family, at least for now. The city of LA's Board of Animal Commissioners met tonight to discuss whether or not those breed labels should be removed. Some commissioners believe that removing the labels would lead to more dogs being adopted, and they point out that visual breed identification can oftentimes be wrong, especially with mixed breeds, and sometimes the labels are already wrong. One commissioner said that removing breed labels encourages people to get to know the dogs instead of looking for a specific breed, and that the idea would be a win-win for the animals and the shelters. That's not lying. 
Ask anyone that's bought a dog from a shelter and they will tell you that shelters don't often correctly identify the breeds or ages of dogs. I can only imagine the outrage from the public if there were a uh, white-faced dog with who was limping and who had fatty tumors and brown worn down teeth and the kennel card said one year old. Uh, I mean, that's open deception of the public. We are presently, and all shelters that breed label are openly deceiving the public in light of scientific fact. And part of being a responsible dog owner is picking a dog that has a disposition that meshes well with yours by getting to know the dog, rather than assuming it's a family dog just because you heard German Shepherds are nice, or skipping over this precious Mickey Mouse pit because you heard pit bulls are aggressive. Now, the last thing I found from this dude that really pissed me off was this tweet that he made. Man attacked by own Staffordshire Bull Terrier dog dies. And when you click on the link here, it does say that. But when you Google the victim's name, you find out that the dog that killed the dude ate a fucking crack rock and went nuts. Which is a perfect example of why it's important to understand what exactly happened and why, rather than accusing the dog of being naturally aggressive and then claiming that the breed is bad. Listen, dogs can fuck you up, a small dog can bite your fucking lips off, and a big dog can literally eat you. So it's important to be a responsible pet owner. Keep your crack away from your dog and people that are looking to adopt a dog should educate themselves on how to train and treat any dog before they adopt it. The vast majority of dog attacks could have been avoided if the owner had taken the right measures to understand how socialized their dog is, what stresses the dog out, and how they react to that stress. Perhaps the most disheartening of these numbers, nearly 70% of these injuries to children have shown to be preventable by changing behaviors and interactions with a dog. You only gotta watch a few hours of Judge Judy to see that all breeds are capable of violence and that bad owners create bad dogs. Now, luckily, this ad didn't play during the Super Bowl. Kenneth couldn't afford the multi-million dollar slot, but he still got seven million views. I mean, in contrast, this video debunking him won't even get a tenth of that many views, showing once again that misinformation gets significantly more traffic than facts. Kenneth M. Phillips is a dog attorney, though. He needs you to listen and believe. He's a merchant of lies with a low traffic website and no soul. I do not like him, and I do not like his shitty propaganda. But if you like me and my shitty propaganda, click that little like button. Subscribe for more content. And thank you to my patrons. And if you wish to become one yourself, there's a link in the description, along with a link to my Twitter. And that's all for today. I'm the Critical and Believer, and as always, Thank you for watching. Kingston, are you excited? Are you